Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that how easily you can create a rating control in Surf UI. So this is the final output that we'll be building. You can see this is a simple rating control with stars. You can click on a particular star and it can tell you what rating that you have selected. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and see how we can actually build it from scratch. So I've already created a basic Surf UI application. You can see that we are working or starting with Hello World. I'm going to go ahead and add a new Surf UI view that will be serving as a rating view. So I will go ahead and name it rating view. There we go. And you can see that it's simply a text control in there. It doesn't really have anything. There we go, it's refreshed. So what should we do in this particular rating view? Well, first of all, we will be passing in the rating from, from outside, so from the content view. And this rating view is then going to change the rating. But content view will be able to get that rating also. So how does the content view does that? The content view or any other view is going to create a state property private var. I will just call it rating. Initially, the rating will be nothing. So we'll just start with, well, nothing. So it's basically an integer optional. Now to build the UI, I can go ahead on the content view, create a vStack, and I can also create a rating view, which right now is simply going to display hello world. So nothing's really going to change at this point. In order to change this rating from within the rating view, we have to pass in the rating. So let's go ahead and do that rating. And we're going to pass in the rating as a bindable property, meaning that from inside the rating view, now we can change this rating. But if you go to your rating view, you can see that, well, we don't really have any constructor or initializer that actually allows us to get the rating. So we are, since we are using a structure, we can create a default initializer rating, and this will be integer and nothing. We're putting it optional because initially the first time the page actually loads, we won't really have any rating. We have to also update our preview. So let's go ahead and call this rating dot constant and provide the value, let's say three. It is completely up to you that how many stars that you want to create in a rating, but I'm just going to max out at five, but that is something that you can change if you want to. All right, so let's go ahead and create some stars. I'm going to go ahead and use a horizontal stack because the rating have to be horizontally set up. And I'm going to use a for each, which is going to return you a particular view. And I'm going to go and mark this with five, meaning it's going to run a loop from one to five. We're going to go ahead and use ID hashable to be self itself. And we are going to get access to the index in. And now we can actually put some view over here. Let's say a star. Taking very step, very small steps, you can actually see right now we are not even displaying the star. We're simply displaying the word star, which actually does appear, which is good, which is great. But we want to actually show star so we can use image. And the good thing is that the image takes a system name and we can pass in the name of the one of those properties, which you can find with a program called uh, SF Explorer or SF icons. I'll find it out for you. And it, I will also link it. For some reason, it doesn't really show it up over here. I was actually, I had it open, right? So one of those icons using the application SF icons is that you can use star. And there are many other options that you can actually use. The app that I was talking about is right here. It is called SF Symbols. And right now I can simply go and search for a star. And you can see that there are many different kinds of stars like a half star also. We're not dealing with a half star, but you can see that we have star, star fill, and all of these different icons. This application, you can simply search on Google and you can download it from the Apple website. Okay, so right now we're running a loop 
and we are running it five times because our maximum star is just five. And you can see all those stars which are not filled are being displayed. Let's go ahead and change their color to something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and say foreground color. You can make the stars big or small if you want. I'm just gonna keep it same and I can go ahead and make them orange. So there we go. Okay, but what about touching the star? Meaning I should be able to simply tap on the star. The great thing is that I can simply go ahead and say tap gesture on tap gesture and set the rating. So rating equals to whatever the index is. Now, since the rating is a binding property, whenever we set the rating, it will automatically be updated over here in the content view because that's the same rating that we were passing in. So it's a great opportunity for the content view or the caller to get the updated star. And now we can print out the updated star. But we also need to take care of the fact that the star will actually change the color once they are selected. And right now they are not. Because in the preview, you can see right over here, we're actually passing in three stars. Basically, we're giving it a rating of three. But you can see three stars are not actually filled out. So how do we fill it out? Well, one of the images from SF Symbols app is a star, but the other one is also star.fill. And you can see the star.fill fills up the star. That's what we need. So this means that we need to put a condition right over here and replace the system name with star or star.fill depending on the condition. Instead of writing this condition over here, maybe it's a good idea to just create a function because this condition is a little bit more work. So I'm gonna say star type and you are going to pass in the index, which is int, and it is going to return you a string. We're gonna go ahead and extract out the rating from self.rating because it is an optional. If the rating does not really exist because maybe we were not able to extract it out because it was null, we're simply going to return an empty star, which is simply a star. However, if the rating does exist, then if the index is less than equals to the rating, which is already unwrapped, then we are going to go ahead and return star.fill, meaning the star is filled, or else we are going to return star. Now we can actually go ahead and use this function instead of this. So I'm gonna say self.star type, passing in the index, which we already have, and saving it. Let's go ahead and refresh our preview. And now you can see that only three stars are actually filled because we are passing three. Let's go ahead and pass in two and see what happens. There we go. And let's then pass in four. And how about five? So how about one? Okay, so it looks like this is working correctly. Let's see that how it is working on our content view because that's the actual thing that is calling the stars, that is passing the stars. We also want to click on the star obviously, right? The other thing that I want to add is some sort of a text view that will display our rating. So I'm just gonna add a text view over here. And let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna click on the first star, second star, or third star, fourth star, and then fifth star. And now you can see that we have easily created a rating system within minutes using Surf UI. And there you have it. If you have enjoyed this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my course on Udemy, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. I have close to 4,000 student enroll, and I am always updating this course, adding some amazing, amazing lectures. You can see that this is the complete course that even go into core data, core ML, neomorphic design, and a lot more. We're gonna start with building list and navigation. We're gonna understand the state and binding. And then we're gonna dive into many important things like an actual coffee ordering application, 
using Swift UI. Now, we will also cover property wrapper score data. We will also build Apple Stocks application, which is in your phone. So we're going to build a clone of Apple Stocks. We're also going to build a Maps application. So we are going to integrate Maps with Swift UI. So this is just amazing course. It's a 16 plus hour course, and it covers everything that you need to know about Swift UI. Now, the best way to get this course is check out the YouTube description. I have some referral links that you can use. Please do use those links because if you use those links, I get to keep a little bit more uh, higher revenue. And there are some other courses that I have. I mean, I have tons and tons of courses on Udemy. So please go ahead and check out my other courses. I'm sure you will enjoy them too. Thank you so much and thank you for your continuous support.